Well, 40% of our COVID deaths in Louisiana are residents in our nursing homes. Some of those homes were hit harder than others, including Forest Manor Nursing and Rehabilitation in Covington. In tonight's Standard of Care, we look at whether the staffing shortage, which experts say COVID made a crisis, affected the spread. Phone calls. Hello. During the COVID pandemic shutdown, the okay. phone calls involving nursing home residents. Hey, Daddy. Hey, Pop. We want to tell you how much we love you. We we kept calling the nursing home. My mom's coughing now. You know, they she needs to be tested. Well, we don't do the testing here. Have been heart wrenching. I know. I'm sorry we bothering y'all, but that's our mom, and she's dying, and she's got COVID. With families locked out, it's hard to say which has been worse. The phone calls that are answered. I am keeping him alive right now with the medications, but those right now, that are not. I would call and sometimes the phone would ring and ring and ring. And then they'd say, oh, well, you need to talk to her nurse. She's not available. One moment. Um... So then they could call back in an hour. Hold on one second, okay? And then I call back, I wish you on the floor. Or those phone calls some families say were never made. I'm her daughter, I'm family, I'm blood. Why, why, will I, why was I never notified? Hi, is this Lisa? Yes, hi, how are you? Hi, Lisa, it's Katie Moore with Channel 4. We've raced in for the end. You got my message that my mom's going to be likely passing today. This phone call is a recording of a call I had with Lisa Blemmer hours before her mother, Carolyn Fowler, died of COVID-19 at Forest Manor Nursing and Rehab in Covington. The hospice called me and told me that um, she's probably not going to make it through the night, that they just went back over there and they couldn't get a pulse on her. And um, she's just resting. How are you feeling? Blemmer was scared and sad and angry at both the disease dragging the life out of her mother and about the care she feels her mother wasn't getting as the pandemic raged. Put the tablet down so we can see you. There you go. A little bit more. The video calls there kept them go. connected. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> sharing a laugh with their mom just days before they would never be able to call her again. A series of health problems and two dozen surgeries led Fowler to Forest Manor. He bought you a cheeseburger too? In this video, you can see staff helping Fowler with her cheeseburger. She took one bite. In those final days battling COVID, Carolyn Fowler gives a voice to some of yeah. her daughter's concerns. You're not getting any help anymore. That's a video call with Carolyn Fowler just days before she died. Blemmer says her mother was talking about help eating, opening straws, cutting her food. And I'm like, well, does anybody go in there and help them with this? Well, you know, we don't have time for that. They forgot about the people. They forgot about who we were supposed to be caring for. This phone call is with a former nurse at Forest Manor who asked not to be identified. It kind of makes me very upset that these people trust us with their family members. And we put so little care into keeping them safe. She says she thinks early on the administration and staff underestimated the virus, not adequately isolating patients and staff who worked with the sick. I feel like so many lives and families were ruined because of it. 38 residents died making it one of the deadliest outbreaks in the state. And what you saw in the nursing homes that got hit hard, it's their staff who got sick, couldn't come to work. We thought it was a nice Staffing facility. levels, they've always been an I issue. I think they're just so overwhelmed. We had a ton of staff going out at one time. Nobody's prepared for what's going on. They couldn't on. care for the patients who were being isolated. You had to take care of those that had COVID, and those that didn't have COVID with less staff. It's become at crisis levels. To find out if there was a connection between quality of care and COVID-19 infection rates, we spent months analyzing state COVID data and federal Medicare quality rankings for Louisiana's nursing homes. We found of the 50 nursing homes with the greatest number of COVID deaths, only two 
had average staffing ratings from Medicare. The rest were ranked below average or far below average even before COVID took hold. I've primarily been researching California and we're showing a strong relationship between staffing and infection rates and deaths. In fact, uh, total staffing and RN staffing can reduce the COVID infection rates and death rates by half. Louisiana's statewide staffing picture isn't much better. It's one reason the AARP ranks our nursing homes among the worst in the country for quality of care. And Medicare data shows Louisiana's COVID infection rate for every thousand nursing home residents tops the chart. But the Louisiana Department of Health and Nursing Home Advocates, the American Healthcare Association, say they think the rate of community spread plays a greater role in nursing home outbreaks than quality of care. They say, quote, outbreaks in nursing homes are correlated to the amount of spread in the surrounding community. And even the best nursing homes with the most rigorous standards cannot always stop this highly contagious and invisible virus. Add to that a lack of access to testing early on and a shortage of personal protective equipment, and insiders say the close quarters of nursing homes made for fertile ground. We were so short, they were able to run in, give them their meds, and run right back out. They were flustered a lot of time. People were getting aggravated because they were not getting breaks. At one point, the former Forest Manor nurse says nurses and aides were short-staffed, working both the COVID isolation hall and the hall where administrators placed patients they thought might have COVID. The obituaries mounted. Gwen Perkins McMillan, Bessie Lee Dyson Manning, Thomas Zenko, and Carolyn Fowler, 38 in all. Fewer residents meant nurses and aides could spend more time with each resident. But the nurse says administrators started cutting back their work hours. It was about money. It's always been about money to that company. We tried repeatedly to speak with the nursing home, but they didn't respond to our calls or emails seeking comment. The Beebe family, longtime Louisiana nursing home owners, own Forest Manor and they have ties to 26 nursing homes across the state. They own even more in Mississippi. More than half of their nursing homes ranked average or above average for overall care. But their staffing numbers tell a different story. All of their homes ranked below average or well below average for staffing. And half of their nursing homes have reported COVID deaths in the double digits. At least 269 residents in all have died of COVID in their care in Louisiana. Elton Beebe declined to comment and other family members did not return our calls or emails seeking comment. The lady moved in with my mom and she's coughing and coughing and coughing, not feeling well. She was too weak to depress the nurse's button. Whether it was the care she received or just the virus's vengeance, it's impossible to say. But Carolyn Fowler's daughters say their experience at Forest Manor left them with lingering questions. You tired? Fowler declined rapidly in her final days as she expressed concerns about not getting help. Just go to sleep and get rest. Each COVID number has a story behind it with family members wondering if this had to be their ending. Love you, Mom. We love you, Mom. We know you love us, too. Over the past several months as I've worked on this series, I tried repeatedly to try and speak with Forest Manor, the Beebe family, and many staff members who I found currently work at the facility to get their perspective on what happened. None of them would do an interview with me about it. Today I heard from a resident at Forest Manor who says he thinks the facility is clean and he says he feels administrators and staff are taking great care of him. And on our Facebook page today, many of the workers at Forest Manor commented saying they did everything they could with the resources they were given. Others said they went above and beyond working extreme overtime to keep their residents safe.